also have one donation of a thousand dollars from the Celeste team that says good luck Tej on the run and thank you Gigi Coop for another amazing event. So I think we are ready to see some Celeste. Is everyone ready? Yeah. All right, take it away Tej. Okay, uh, so you guys can hear me now I'm guessing. Uh, what's up, I'm TGH. This is gonna be Celeste, all chapters. Uh, let me introduce my couch or they can introduce themselves if they like. I'm Dave Stereo. I'm Ben Teasy. I'm Punchy. Hi. All right, so uh, some of you guys may have seen uh, the SGDQ race between myself and Yoshi Pro, uh, last SGDQ. Uh, stuff has changed since then, um, for sure. Uh, lots of little optimizations, uh, lots of new tricks. Uh, the community for this game is insane, just like working, labbing really hard on stuff, and uh, and just it's, it's been unbelievable to watch the speedrun develop, and uh, hopefully uh, this will be a good showcase of that. So, uh, uh, can we get the uh, the winner of the final name incentive? I think I know what won, but I just want to make sure. Yeah, so the file, man, uh, file name is going to be Charlotte. Okay. So, C-H-A-R-L-O-T-T-E. Does that have any particular significance to you, Tej, or...? Uh, not to me, no. Interesting. This is correct, though? Okay. Yep, that All is right, correct. Awesome. I'll have to ask okay. about that later. So uh, I guess I'll go over the basic, uh, like, gist of the category first and foremost before I begin. Uh, so this is all chapters, which means we're going to be doing the A, B, and C sides of each chapter. Every A side has a, uh, a B side and C side to go along with it. Uh, the B sides are significantly harder than the A sides, but the same length, and the C sides are just kind of like uh, insane difficulty, uh, but a lot shorter, three screens each. Uh, so we'll be going into each A side, getting the heart and the cassette. We'll explain more about that later, and then we'll be doing the B side and then moving on. And we'll do the C sides after all of that. Uh, I won't be talking much during this run. Uh, I'll try my best to chip in every now and again, but my couch is gonna take care of commentary. It's kind of hard to speak and play at the same time. Uh, so, all right, uh, let's get hype. And uh, we'll count down. <laughs> count down from five, four, three, two, one. Let's go. Video games. All right, for those of you that have not played Celeste, um, Celeste is a precision platformer. It has three main buttons. You saw the first one there, that's climb. Tej is using the other one, jump, right now. And the last one he'll get here at the end of this prologue, it's the dash button. Everything you see Tej doing this run is a combination of those three buttons. So it might sound very simple at first, but it's one of those uh, simple to learn, difficult to master type of games. So you're gonna see a lot of fast flying action really early on into this run. And we didn't die during prologue, so that's good. It's a good plus, start. For sure. Good start. <laughs> Deathless run and I donate all the money I'm currently carrying. <laughs> Which is all the money I brought, by the way. Please don't. <laughs> so the main mechanics we're going to see here are is the hyper dash and many variations of it. Hyper dash is basically crouching and pressing dash and jump at the same time. Tej is going to leave the ground at a later point in his dash to pre actually preserve the dash because Madeline only gets one dash um, per time that she's in the air. So he's here. You can see that he dashes and then he jumps at the end of the dash to preserve the dash. And chapter one is actually pretty technical. It's one of the most optimized levels in the game. It's very short, so a lot of people like to practice it as an individual level, and they've pushed the strats pretty far. So right here on this screen, you're going to see TJ is going to do an extended dash here to reach the top of the transition, and the transition actually gives him his dash back. He missed the, the grab there at the end, but he was trying to reach this top platform because this is where the first heart is located. You need the hearts to open uh, chapter 8A, chapter 8B, and chapter 8C. So you actually have to collect all the hearts to be able to complete all chapters. Nice little optimization there. He actually retried after activating the cheat code, um, or not the cheat code, the heart code, and that allows him to skip the animation of the heart spawning, and uh, he can just retry and the heart's already there. I was gonna say, that's a, that's a puzzle where you need to input a specific sequence of dashes. He did not cheat code. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he just... <laughs> He has those, that specific sequence of dashes mem uh, memorized, so it's pretty easy to just do them as soon as he entered the screen, because that's the... You can enter them as soon as you get in the screen, as long as you're far enough left to activate the cutscene with the last dash. Another piece of movement tech you guys are seeing is he is uh, dashing vertically into uh, walls, and uh, it gives him a wall bounce and uh, gives him extra height and uh, speed. 
And then this is the cassette. Uh, you need the cassette to unlock the B-sides for each level. So to unlock 1B, you need uh, the 1A cassette. He's going to return to map because it actually saves a substantial amount of time IGT. Uh, the normal speedrun for this game goes off of IGT on the leaderboards. So most of the strats Teach is going to be using are in-game time strats uh, so that save seconds because the clock actually stops when you're on the level select screen. So that's why you're going to see him like retrying and save and quitting and uh, returning to the map in the middle of the levels. On this next screen here, TJ is going to be going for a lineup here that allows him to wall bounce or to, that allows him to wall jump off of these spikes here. Boing. <laughs> just like that. You don't need to do the whole this room. Just go up the left side. No biggie. No problem. Clear. And that's chapter one. <laughs> so TJ is going to jump uh, right into one B here. You can actually do the B-sides immediately after doing the A-sides, but the C-sides don't unlock until you beat 8B. So he's going to do 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B, and then after 8B, he's going to go back and do all the C-sides. So look forward to that at the end of the run. Uh, the B-sides, like Teach said, are a lot harder. Um, there's much less floor in the B-side. You'll see <laughs> that there's literally nothing under him and most of the time. He's just jumping around uh, from spike wall to spike wall and... Uh, yeah, this this is the B sides are definitely a treat. Uh, this next screen here is a screen where you see the first like real spike jump here, and he's actually jumping off of that little corner between the spikes. That's a really precise trick, and he's gonna do another one right here. Ah, the, this one's hard. Yeah, this one's a little bit harder. There we go. And, and there is the one. Hey, we're just gonna die in easy places now. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> people, people play through this game and they die like hundreds, if not thousands, of times. And this guy is like, nah, I die once. I'm mad. <laughs> uh, Tej knows a couple of his fans are donating per death, so he's actually doing it for charity. <laughs> in case you guys were curious. Exactly. Exactly. Guess on the other side of that block with a nice precise dash. Check out, cool this, check out right their here. screen right here. It's way, yo. So what, what he actually did there is called a reverse hyper dash, or technically a reversed extended hyper dash. And uh, you dash into one direction, and then you fly the other way. It's like a pivot cancel if you play Smash Brothers, which a lot of you probably do. And then this next screen uh, here, uh, he's uh, going to uh, do an extended off of this very small block to actually skip this entire uh, cycle entirely. The nice thing about go. Celeste is that every screen transition is pretty much a checkpoint. So if you die, you don't really go that far back. So the deaths, while they may be punishing like if you're trying to PB, uh, they're, they're pretty marathon safe. because. I you uh, start right there. And again, whenever we say extended, uh, we mean that he is retaining the dash uh, after performing the dash move. Nice. And at the end of every single B-side, you have these, like, these rooms? I don't even know what to call them. Cassette rooms? Cassette rooms, mark. yeah. And the beats of the platform cycle is when they flash between blue and purple. They are synced to the beat of the music, which we did not get to hear much of because he did it in, like, two seconds. <laughs> Fun fact, you can actually die after collecting the heart. Yeah, done that. Yep, that's fun. Thanks. It's very fun to do. Try not to do that this run. I'll try. Thank you. <laughs> no, Thank please you. do. It's really funny. <laughs> so here we got 2A. Uh, 2A, the heart is actually hidden in the very beginning of the level. Uh, you're not supposed to know playing the game casually that screen transitions replenish your dash. Uh, it's usually it's like a little bit of a puzzle to figure out, but Teach actually kind of figured that out like nine months ago. So <laughs> <laughs> he's uh, going to just go right up here and collect his heart. And again, he's going to do a IGT trick to save a little bit of time on the timer. I really yep. like the sound effect that plays when a heart breaks. It's majestic. <laughs> so it's actually it's a, wonderful. There's actually a combination of uh, of controller buttons you can hold and press to uh, immediately rest immediately restart a chapter, which is good. So and it saves time there. Something we didn't really talk about much here. Uh, we did mention that the transitions replenish your dash, but we didn't. Uh, tell you that they also retain your momentum. So you'll see Teach usually hyper dashes into the transitions to kind of just keep flying at the speed of sound. And yep, so right there what I did was I actually dashed a couple times. Um, that actually saves time, IGT, another IGT trick. Um, so everything else in the game, the dash, your dash actually freezes the entire game for about three frames uh, every time you dash. So in those rooms, since the, uh, the blocks are actually tied to the music uh, as far as timing goes, so everything else in the game freezes except for those blocks. That's so it actually saves about three frames every time you do it on the IGT, because the IGT freezes as well. That's clever. I didn't think of that. It's like one of the few things I've actually found for this game. <laughs> he just uses everyone else's strats. Cheeky guy. So Pretty this much. Is, this is the bad line chase. Bad line mirrors you by about three seconds behind, I think. Yep, three. Yes. 
and obviously she oh, touches yeah. you, you die. These rooms, you have to activate all these coins in order to uh, move the block that blocks the exit. You'll be seeing many of those rooms throughout the run. Not all of them strictly require you to hit all the coins to get out, though. That is correct. Supposed to, but we have ways. Also, Beating that cycle beats the battle into the hole. That's tight. That's very tight. Also, some things about these dream blocks. Um, when you pass through them, you get your dash back. Uh, you can also jump out of the dream blocks. And believe it or not, you can actually also hyper dash out of the dream blocks. Yeah, we don't do that too much in this chapter. That's more for 2B. 2B. Actually, no. Uh, I'm sorry. 7A, we do that. Not 2B. 2B, we double jump a lot. But yeah. 7A is where we, uh, where we hyper a lot. There's a little grace period when coming out of the blocks that counts as a platform and that lets you do fun things. So this is actually one of the tightest sections in the game here. There's no real risk of dying, but the movement has become so optimized because there's actually a little trick to Madeline's movement that when you dash down forward, um, it's not fixed speed the way her normal dash is. She actually continues to accelerate. So by combining uh, bunny hops, which we didn't really talk about much, but they actually accelerate Madeline a little bit. Um, by combining bunny hops and down forward dashes, you actually can get really, really fast and uh, Technically, it stacks with, like, no upper limit whatsoever. Mm -hmm. so it's just limited by your ability to chain it, which is really hard. Yep. As far as we know, there is no actual speed cap in this game, and we're going to showcase that a little bit later. Uh, the speed that you can obtain in this game gets pretty absurd. Look forward to it. So one thing Tej is going to uh, showcase for us here in 2B, uh, what? you may you remember that I said that you can jump out of the dream blocks, but one thing you can do, if you have two jump buttons, you can actually double jump out of the dream blocks, which gives you more height and more speed. Yeah, so he's going to go a lot further than the game expects him to with a lot more momentum because he's actually inputting a jump input right before exiting the block and then one after exiting the block. It's like almost too much power at times. You like overshoot where you're going. And then battle line is back in 2B. You'll see that the B sides tend to mirror the mechanics from the A sides. They just try to put like more hazards or obstacles in your way. No biggie. It happens. It's a hard game. This next screen actually has a really cool skip uh, involving the double jump. Usually you have to fall down after dashing over these spikes to replenish your dash on the crystal, but... <laughs> I'm not going to showcase it because I missed it. <laughs> but that's fine. <laughs> that's, right. that's the commentator's curse right there. Cool. Gets, on that, gets on that little gap. That's, that one's pretty Ooh. cool, though. That's such a sick strat. You can just barely land on that without touching the spikes to replenish your dash without having to go around the left side. All right, so here in this next screen, right. I'm going to try a corner boost to uh, just skip these coins. See Ooh. how well this goes. Really now? Ooh! Hey. Oh, oh my God. That jump is like almost as hard as the, the corner boost. Guess that little corner. Yes, guys. that's a good one. So have we talked about corner boosting yet? Uh, I don't believe so. No. So corner boost is when Madeline grabs the top corner of a block, I believe it's three pixel window. She has a uh, three frames where she could jump and she actually like accelerates like crazy like past the corner as opposed to getting stuck on the corner. So the runners use that to their advantage to, you know, just go fast because they're speedrunners. Yeah, that mechanic I don't think always existed in the game when it first came out. I think it got added as sort of like a byproduct of a different bug fix, but the devs were like, eh, this one's cool. cool, we'll keep it. Which is like very reflective of their general attitude towards <laughs> speedrunning, which I appreciate. Yeah, quick shout outs to fun. Matt and the whole team at Matt Mix Games. They are incredibly uh, helpful with the speedrun stuff. They also, really I are. love Seriously. your game. It's a good and game. That's 2B. That room can be a nightmare casually, but uh, it's just two quick wall bounces in the speedrun. 202. That's pretty fast. Their B-sides are actually, like, on average shorter than their A-sides in a run, but they're much harder. All right, so we have 3A now, which is uh, very cycle-based. As, uh, as soon as you'll see this, you'll figure that out pretty quickly. This is the first big, uh, like, difficulty spike for players when they first try out the game. It gets a lot darker, a lot dingier, and these dust bunnies, as well we call the little cycling monsters, they, they do not play nice. 3A is also pretty long. So yeah. This room's a tight cycle bombing straight in here. He'll duck straight under that dust ball, goes through, collects the berry as well in passing. <laughs> we don't need the berry, we don't want the berry, it's just kind of in the way of yep. the optimal strats. And eh, berry. We take them. Whoops. Okay. Okay, so this is an important concept as well. Uh, he died there, but when he respawned, the moving dust things are on like a different cycle. Because when you die, there's like a little animation of you popping back into life and what have you, and that puts things on a slightly different timing. We call that a death cycle, which means runners need to know like a normal cycle when they first enter, and a death cycle. And it's like, wow, do you really have to memorize two different timings for every single room in case you make a mistake? Yes. Yes. Yes, you did. Thanks for asking. 
So you are gonna see some like little hazards here on the wall. Whenever Teach touches them, they make basically a death wall after he leaves. Uh, but in some of these rooms, Teach is gonna go so fast that he's actually able to like utilize the floor again even after leaving it because he 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 moves faster than the enemies actually spawn. Which is pretty impressive. So here we see Oshiro for the second time. You might have missed him the first time. Tiege likes to skip cutscenes really quickly. It's part of the whole speedrunning thing. But uh Skipping Oshiro cutscenes and my speedrun. <laughs> Oshiro basically has a really big mess of boxes, books, and towels uh, cluttering up this hotel, and we can't really get through. So we're gonna go around here in each section and uh, basically help clean up the hotel so that we can get out of here. So there's three separate pathways that you can take in this section, and uh, as you can see, there's box platforms, towel platforms, and the books. And depending on which one you go to first, uh, it will remove that type from the subsequent rooms. So uh, depending on which rooms you enter first, you will have different challenges in the further rooms. Yeah, so very, very, it's really geniusly designed, this, uh, this huge mess kind of section. So the routing has also been like designed as well to take advantage of the various platforms that appear or don't appear, depending on what order you do it in. As well as where Oshia respawns in the big room after each one, because that's like fixed order, I think. And also, this section is just going to be a bunch of platforming while Tj cleans up the huge mess. So this might be a good time for donations, if you have any. Sure thing. Actually, I just want to let you know that we have hit 800,000 right now. So give it up for that. Don't stop. Keep those donations coming. We have a $50 donation from uh, Amber uh, Cyprin that says, uh, Hey, all Amber here. I didn't get to donate during the Sonic Block this year due to work, but I had to donate during TJ's Celeste Run. It's a wonderful game that I finally got to experience as a Christmas gift, and the story truly resonated with me as I have been struggling a lot with anxiety and depression. Sending all the love and luck in the world to you on behalf of the International Isometric Salt Mine family, Teach. Thanks, Amber. <laughs> Thank you so much for this Christmas gift and for being one of the best friends I could ever ask for. Put this donation towards making the file name in Klonoa, door to Phenomile. Wahoo! P.S. Hookie Duck. <laughs> and then we also have a $250 donation from Nintendo Caprice on 42 that says, Do it again, Teach. You the man. Thanks, that's a yes. All right, so now we're entering the next segment of the hotel here. This is the elevator shaft. Uh, this section can be a little tricky, but uh, because the screens are so much longer, the, the deaths can actually be pretty punishing. But hopefully, uh, T just got this under control here. Hopefully. And, yep, hopefully, there it is. Nice. Says. Nice As to know you have faith in me, Ben. <laughs> As if you could doubt it. Come on. Time right, for the so hyper pretty room. cool. Just slips under that every go. single time and has the timings just to always beat the cycle. Gets in there before that platform comes back. So you... Chapter 3 is nice because it actually like throws the heart and the cassette in your face. So it's like another little design choice that Matt made where like it shows you that these things are available in the game and that you can go out there and find them. So it's just a nice little like thing I wanted to point out there about the game. I play through the whole game without ever noticing the hearts on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm that guy. Okay, so you might have remembered Battleline. You might have remembered Oshiro. Uh, they had a little argument, and now Oshiro's taking it out on us. Yeah, we're leaving a bad review for Oshiro on uh, on uh, on Yelp. <laughs> <laughs> and he's uh, chasing, chasing us across the, the uh, Rufus Hotel. Shout out to Duke Fiber. That's not an original joke, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I had to give him credit for that. So Teach will be able to gauge where Oshira is flying by the lightning bolt that uh, precedes his uh, flying across the screen. Jumps over the spring, doesn't want to hit that first one because it will stall his momentum. He wants to get slightly over it to beat the faster cycle. And the last screen is pretty cool here if I can manage to okay. get the cycle correct. This is a good one. Boy, it's very tight. So far, so good. Looking solid. There nice. There's the one. That is not That's even. Great. That is not even slightly an easy screen. Man, looking esports over here. <laughs> All right, so we're moving on to three B, which is uh, more or less the same. Everything you hate about Chapter Three, except more of it. <laughs> Way harder. I'm just it's just something you gotta get used to. Like once you get used to like th these uh, these chapters are so hard casually, but the speedrun strats really actually make them a lot easier. Also, this song though. Yes. It's so good. It's very good. So, you guys thought I was kidding about the no floor thing in B-Sides. Nope. But uh, 
I'm really not. Nope. <laughs> you, can, you see a flaw? I don't. <laughs> you can, it's literally only the transitions that have uh, right under here. here. Nice. So this is another spike jump, like the ones from 1B. And oh, oh, I went too early. A little early. See, it's that cycle stuff again. So now he's on the death cycle, so he needs a different timing. Does he know the different timing? Of course he knows the different timing. Why do I ask nice. those questions? So that the trick uh, Tej did where he went under the wall, it's basically Madeline can actually jump off of walls even if she's coming from behind the wall. She doesn't have to be actually moving towards the wall to jump off of it. And you're going to see Tej make use of that a couple of times throughout the run. It's another one of those quirks that this game's really lenient, like buffer jumping system. So like, I describe Celeste as the hardest game that anyone can beat. That's a really good way to put it. Because it is definitely hard. Like, you see in this? It's hard. Yeah. <laughs> this next screen right here is really, really cool. Tej is just going to bunny hop off of that and keep his momentum. And yeah, just skip all of that. I didn't need it. <laughs> Any of those nuts. platforms. Nice and easy. Ooh, barely lands on that one. It can be hard sometimes to be uh, as patient as you need to be with uh, a lot of these strats, which I'm demonstrating pretty well here. No okay. floor! Cycles. <laughs> Good music, and that's 3B in a nutshell. Shouts out Lennon Rain. Pretty real, though. Excellent soundtrack. So Lennon Rain is the composer of this game's soundtrack, for those who aren't clear. For real, though, like, I, I pretty much, like, I... I sort of gravitate towards speedruns and games that have great music, and this is definitely one of them. I think everyone does. Like, name a good speed game with bad music. You can't do it. It's impossible. <laughs> Seriously, try. If you can, tweet it at me. I, I cannot okay. think of one. Our friend Oshiro is back here. All right, so we're going to try. We're going to try and use Oshiro here. There we nice. go. Nice. You bonk him, you get your dash back. That doesn't come up a whole lot in the A side. Yeah, most things, most interactable things in this game, you'll find that when you touch them, you actually get your dash back. So it's a, it's good to, it's not obvious when you play through it casually, you feel like you have to just avoid every bubble and Oshiro and everything, but. Okay, so coming up here, I'm gonna do something called a demo dash. Um, I'm gonna let my couch explain it after I do it. Uh, so it's gonna look like I'm dashing straight into this wall here. Whoops, I should probably hit the dash button. <laughs> <laughs> Tends to help. All right. This might take me a few tries. It's a little tricky. I didn't have a dash. So, Wait for it. It'll be worth it, I assure you. There we go. Oh. Oh. Great crew. <laughs> okay, so essentially what that is, is that's a crouch dash, a uh, crouching dash. So if you hold down, or if you press down while you dash and then let go, Madeline will not dash down. She'll dash in the direction she's facing or whatever direction you decide to hold as soon as she actually starts to dash. Um, and what that does is it makes her hitbox exactly four pixels tall. And it just so happens that each of each wall of dust bunnies or spikes in the game is made up of like these round shaped hitboxes that are exactly four pixels apart. So that's pixel perfect, um, crouching dash, and it's pretty uh, it's pretty cool. Chapter four brings us uh, or introduces us to uh, green bubbles as well as clouds and wind. Everybody's favorite mechanic. Ducks under that first wall. He don't need that bubble. Yeah, every single time he gets in a bubble as well, he's hitting the dash button immediately because normally when you enter a bubble, there's a certain buffer period before it lets you move. But pressing dash just lets you move straight away. So you press lots of buttons. Like this. You could go over and around, or you could just jump straight through the room, like the hole he came into. That works too. All right, I'm going to try a cycle skip here on the tape once I get to the screen. Ducks onto those. Ooh, makes it. Got it. Yeah. Nice. I promised you guys that you guys should look up the cassette room music. Uh, Lena has it online. Um, it's a, it's really good music, even though Tej won't let you hear it. <laughs> it's just going too fast. There's also there, there's also a really cool strat for the heart coming up here. So there's a really cool uh, homage to Super Mario Brothers 3. Um, this white block here. You're supposed to use this white block crouch on it, but we're just gonna do. Nope, not that. It's really cool homage. We're going to completely ignore by yes. doing a nice corner jump like this. It's a little precise. It's very hard. I got this once ever. There we go. There, there it goes. All right, we're going to save and quit. Which just skips the text for the heart. So yeah, that was another one of those uh, corner jumps, like when you're coming past the wall. Um, TJ jumped off the wall as he was going past it to 
You're supposed to, to use these moving platforms to like progress across the level, or you could just launch off them. Oops. This is a cool strat right here if I can get on the cloud. Yes. There we go. This is a cool strat right here. So this is, uh, remember those down right dashes Oosh, we were talking about? Straight across. Tej is going to start really showing off ultra dashes as the run progresses. Another corner boost. Dash straight down into the floor there to set himself up for a nice bunny hop. Skips the first bubble, skips the second bubble. We don't need bubbles. Skips okay, the platform. Who needs bubbles? Okay, this is a nice tight bunny hop to skip that block over there. That one's really difficult. Yeah, he has to do pretty much the <laughs> minimum jump height. It's convenient the, that the that's most generous point. Gonna, point. This this round's gonna just be full of me doing the most difficult stuff and then dying immediately afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, this is this is Celeste in a nutshell. This is me in a nutshell, rather. Goes for the extreme risk, dancing near the spikes to save like what a second. Celeste uh, players. Get up there, thank you. I'm gonna wait. Hey, you gotta beat a wind cycle to the bubble there. Okay, so this next section is called Cliff Face. Um, it's actually one of the cooler sections of Chapter 4, I think, because the wind actually gets really fierce. It's important to note, though, that while he's dashing or hyper dashing, that the wind actually doesn't affect Madeline. So he's trying to use as many dashes to keep himself from getting pushed back. But you'll see every time like he even takes a step on the floor that she's just battling against the wind. She does not... Well, I mean, Teach apparently doesn't want to touch the floor to show you guys, <laughs> but believe me, it's true. Touching the floor? <laughs> nice reverse jump off of that. Yeah, Ball bounces off. You can actually use the green bubbles to set up a reverse hyper dash. They're blue. They're blue? Turquoise. Teal. <laughs> Aquamarine. In chapter we'll, four. We'll, we'll go with turquoise. Okay. That. I excuse myself from color judgment entirely. <laughs> So the beginning of Chapter 4B has a couple of auto-scrollers before we get to the more interesting screen. So we may have time for like one or two donations. All right. We have a uh, $1,000 donation from uh, Libnit. It says, Teach is one of the most talented runners in our community, and I had to donate during the Celeste run. Thank you so much for that donation. I'm going to try that again. Take it. There we go. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Sneaks under. You have time for one more. No problem. We have a $5 donation from the Celeste Tutorial Bird. It says, <laughs> I keep telling Celeste how to do stuff like the up dash, but by the time I'm done, Alan's three screens away. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Bird. Maybe another time. I was just expecting car. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, best B-side music right here. Yeah. Yeah. I'll cop to that. I'm not agreeing, but... I, oh. Yeah, I, I think I'm with Ben on this one. I'm sorry. <laughs> so one thing uh, you're, you saw Teach do there, he grabbed the side of the stone platform, uh, which allowed him to wave dash off the top of it. If he had started off by uh, hitting the top of the stone platform, when he jumped, it would have disappeared right after that. So these, uh, these rooms are a little bit of stamina puzzles. We don't really talk about stamina much in the speedrun because it's there's actually ways to get around the stamina issues in the game. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's a little tough casually, especially uh, to get up these rooms because you run out of stamina when you climb. But T is used to them, so. Yeah. You can only climb so far before the game's like, no, stop. To prevent you from like scaling walls infinite like the Spider-Man. Well, Going like, under here. Nice screen. There we go, skip that bubble. And much how you can set up reverse hyper dashes with the bubbles, you can also set up uh, wall bounces with the bubbles. A nice little skip coming up here too. And there we go. <laughs> And another good one. Bounces off that, sets it up for the bunny hop, skips the third block below. He don't need it. We only need two. Why get a third? Yeah. Shout out to the lower block coming in right now. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> that lower block is such a mood. <laughs> another little auto scroller here. Chapter four is kind of notorious for its auto scrollers. Um, most of them we have like cool strats for, but some of them we just have to ride the blocks at yep. the end. Whoops. Apparently wasn't in line with that. Uh, T has a couple this, of cool strats on this Yeah, room. this is where it gets cooler here. If I can showcase it. Ooh, little bounce. That's fine. 
All right, so the screen coming up is actually really unique, if one of you guys want to explain that. Uh, is it the key screen? Yep. OK, so the next screen has a bunch of those lock switches that Dave was talking about earlier. Uh, Teach is actually just going to skip all of them. Uh, because of the way that the wind pushes you here, you can actually use it to get over this really fat block and jump off that little corner and get to first nice. try. That's really good. He makes it look so easy. It ain't. It's really not. But I feel like all our runners here at GDQ make everything look easy. And there's a nice little cycle skip here at the end. Going to wall bounce off of that, hyper Get off of here. And yes. That's 4B. And like Dave said earlier, it's actually possible to die after collecting the heart, but before it triggers that you have it. So he actually jumped off of the wall there at the end just to make sure he didn't fall off the bottom. Yep. You died once? Uh, yeah, it was the second screen as well. One. <laughs> wow. The second screen where I had to redo the uh, the auto scroll skip there. One. So this is one of the best songs in the game. Teach is not going to let you hear it for very long, but it's a shame. Uh, it's a shame that in the speed run you don't hear this song for very long. Or you don't hear the piano at least for very long. Yeah. Chapter five is a very different style of level where it more like opens up and becomes sort of more exploratory. But uh, this is a speed run, so we're going to take like the shortest line possible through the stage, but there's tons of branching areas full of, like, things. So the red bubbles, in contrast to the, what do we decide? Turquoise? <laughs> Turquoise <laughs> bubbles. It doesn't matter, dude. Uh, they actually travel infinitely until Tiege decides to exit them with a dash. So um, that's a little bit of a difference there between those and the ones in the previous chapter, as well as these platforms here that activate when you dash and then return to the jump energy. Yeet. Yeet. This, this category is actually unique since we actually go for two yeets. <laughs> that, that strat is called Yeet, by the way. I'm not kidding. Um. <laughs> yeah, so what happened there was Teej actually used the momentum from the dash block that he was on and combined that with uh, a corner boost to, like we said, get really, really fast. So you can perhaps surmise by, uh, by what's just transpired, but dash blocks, they move when you dash. So yeah, you can, set them, the up to, you can set them up to get lots of momentum. All right, so now we're going to return to the map and we're going to do it again. Uh, so, fun fact, um, we call this the double yeet. Um, double yeet. <laughs> double it yeet. It only saves time if you get it again. Double yeet. If, also, not, if not, it loses like a second. <laughs> it's a really hard strat, too. Yeah, it's not easy at all. Do we have a double yeet? Oh, we don't. Oh. Uh, you know what? I'm doing it again. Screw it. <laughs> For the fans. <laughs> there we go. Yeet. Yeet. Double yeet. Filthy. Filthy double yeet. <laughs> So the heart in this chapter is actually locked behind a, a locked door. I guess that was a redundant statement. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's chill. It's a Teach has to come up here through this extra section that you don't normally see to get the key. And the game actually puts a locked door between here and the locked door for the heart. So you actually have okay. to take a, a hidden path to avoid that door and get the, the heart. And say, uh, smuggling a key through a key door is like not a speed run thing. That's just a part of the level design. I'm going for this, by the way. He's going for double bubble skip. Oh, you have okay. to get a tight corner boost off this little spike here in order to skip going up and around, getting there bubbles like that. Oh, there God. Go. That's the Very way. nice. Only slightly better than SGDQ. And Only that, slightly better. And that corner boost is actually a little bit harder because you lose most of your speed because of how far you're traveling. So it's a, it's a little bit tighter than the other ones. All right, so we're actually going to, uh, this, this heart room has a lot of platforming uh, to go up and around to get the heart. We're not going to do any of that uh, because there is a skip here. There we go. Ooh, That's actually really good. Try. Confident, confident play. Whoops, That's not what I, mean. I hope I didn't mess up any of my options there. That would have been, that would be bad. It's really easy to accidentally open the options menu while doing it. And like, I, I like to accidentally turn rumble on a whole bunch. <laughs> it's great. We have a short sequence of cutscenes here, so we might have time for one donation. Yep. We have a uh, $5 donation from Covert Muffin that says, Hey, Teach, hey. proud of all the hard work you've put in and pumped for you to show off more epic tech. May the spikes and Kevin blocks be <laughs> ever so friendly. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Covert. Appreciate it, man. And uh, a $10 donation from the Celeste 1A Puzzle Birds that says, Kaha! Of course. There, there we go. You happy now? <laughs> Satisfactory. All right, so on the next screen, there's a really cool strat here that only works if Teach fast falls Ooh. after this. You can All actually right. try that at, at home if you want. All you have to do is fast fall and line up your jump. Yep. 
And these are Seekers here. They're going to rush after Tej. Um, oh, one thing we didn't say. There is absolutely no RNG in this run. Uh, T depending on how Tej moves through the room, he's going to know where the Seeker is going to uh, be. This is my favorite one. He gets a little bonk there. It doesn't look like it works, but it just barely does. And there's a yep. nice follow-up there. Oops. Let's get a sequential bonk. Bonks off two of them in a row. And they can activate the coins for you. They can. You can bait them into doing so. Also, when they die, they eventually respawn, and when they explode, they activate switches. And they can launch you, which you will see later. They also, can. It gives you a nice little bit of momentum. We use everything in this one. Everything. Every little mechanic that was ever put into this game is, like, exploited to its full potential. Pretty much. It's very, very diverse in its movement, and that's, that's what makes it such an awesome game. So this segment is a really big segment called Search, where you're looking for your friend Theo. Teach doesn't care about he any of it. that. He's just left. That little piece of movement that saves, like, somewhere in the ballpark of, like, three minutes or something? Probably yeah, a bit it's, more. it's a very, very big skip compared to the casual playthrough of the game. Because you normally have to get a bunch of keys to open a bunch of doors and then get a bubble. It's like, how about alternative? Don't. Yeah. We like that strat. We're speedrunners. One thing I like about 5A is you, you step on a lot more Seekers. And <laughs> I don't like Poor them. Seekers. Let, like, let's, let's count the <laughs> amount of Seekers we land on here, actually. So here, uh, Teach is actually com combining some weird mechanics with when There's carrying one. Theo with some Ultra Dashes. So he's going to be preserving a lot of momentum every time he picks up the crystal and uh, just pretty much flying through these screens. Yeah, the crystal interacts with momentum in a way that I really don't understand precisely. Flare Bear explained it to me, but I just heard jazz music in my ears. <laughs> 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 it's very weird and complicated. I, you get used to the feel of it, but it kind of like stops friction when you pick him up. So this this speed here. It extends oh, a bit mind. further. Never mind. Yeah, this we, is an, that this won't is fly. An, this is a nice big one. That will fly, there however. We go. That will. Yeah. Big speed, straight into the door. Just go up and over here. You're supposed to throw Theo Pe onto the platform. Alternatively, take him over the top. Oh, man. Nice little bump. Yeah, just kick them all. Kick them all. Here's some more ultras right here, jumping around, going fast. These little shockwaves that emanate push him back, but you can dash through them if you have good timing. And that's chapter 5A. Nicely yep. done. OK. So 5B actually uh, is faster in the any percent run, fun fact. Uh, we actually get the tape and then uh, close out and do 5B. And due to a bug, it allows us to open 6A that way. But um, so it's made possible by uh, this trick called the uh, the bubs drop. Uh, the tech was found by Bubai and the application actually was found by uh, Demo Jameson. So the one of you guys want to explain that, actually? Yeah, While sure. So. There's going to be a screen here with a one-way transition where you land on a platform after you transition and uh, the, you can't go back down because Mad Madeline actually can't drop through platformers like most characters can in platformers. Um, but be by, a by wall jumping off the wall right before he lands on the platform and actually dropping back down into this screen, no, uh, didn't get it. too early. Fortunately, there's a checkpoint really close by, so you can just go for it again. Yep. It is near frame perfect. Yeah, um, but if he does that, when he comes back into this screen, the game doesn't know where to put him if he dies. So it's actually going to put him at the respawn point on the there right. And there, there you go. go. Doing that saves a lot of time. Since 5B, a lot like 5A, is also more of an exploratory level. you got to go around, get a bunch of keys. Doing that skips the entire process. Yeah, there's, you actually don't pick up any keys with the route now. Uh, None. See, like that wall. It's supposed to open that and go back out. And a cool thing you're going to see at the end of the screen here, uh, T just going to appear to wall jump off the spikes. Uh, as long as he's moving away from the wall, he won't take damage from the spike. Yep. That skips getting another key, since the idea is you ride a bubble up there. You can just about fit through. And just like 5A, uh, at the top of the screen, T is going to activate a mirror, which is going to put him in like this kind of weird, dark universe thing. I'm not trying to get into any of the plot, but... Uh, <laughs> Again, metaphor for anxiety. No, no floor. <laughs> I just want to say this is the best B-side music. This is my favorite as well. Sorry, yeah. Teach. Yeah. Sorry, Teach. It's okay. It's fine. People have so opinions. We're, we're we're gonna kick a lot of seekers here. That was yes. one. This is two. two. Here's three. Yeah. Skip that whole section. So again, just like Ashiro, stepping on the seekers actually gives Madeline her dash back. We actually land on this guy twice. Yeah, we really don't like that. And then use him. Nice big boost. And somehow, Theo got trapped again. <laughs> so here we are saving him one more time. Here's another one. Actually, you, you might kick more Seekers in this chapter. I, I think you do, actually. <laughs> I like you how you blocked that guy with that one, too. 
You blocked him with the crystal instead. I like that. That's creative. So you couldn't see it because of the text box. Theo was asking if this is canon. I don't think it is. Ah. But uh, there was actually a switch up there, and Tej went up and pressed it. You bunked that guy twice. Yeah. <laughs> you really didn't like him. Yeah, he got in my way. Happens. And Tej is going to go for a cycle skip on this next screen here. Let's see <laughs> if he gets it. This one is clearly impossible. Is it, though? Hey, Got nicely it. done. Nice, first try. <laughs> 208. Oh, wait, no, that's not right. No, like no, because I had to return. I was yeah. going to say, like, what? 208. <laughs> that would have been IO. That's why I IO record. Record. <laughs> I forget. When you retry from, a, like, after saving and quitting, it resets the chapter timer, so you can't do, like, fraudulent IO runs by restarting I, I, in the middle. I totally just got IO record by 13 seconds. <laughs> no big deal. All right, so uh, I'm, I'm going to actually just do 6A uh, for right now uh, as if it were any percent. Uh, I'm going to come back later and get the heart and cassette because I think it works out a little bit better that way. So 6A introduces us to these feathers, which, uh, as you can see, allows us to fly through the air for a certain amount of time. Yep, and you'll notice I'm actually... Uh, uh, the, uh, the joystick on the controller actually allows for a 360 movement with these feathers, which is cool. Here's Lake Skip. There we go. By Lake Skip. That's really difficult and saves <laughs> like five seconds or something. So yeah, with the feathers, if you move more than 17 degrees, you will uh, lose speed. So in order to move in that sort of increments, you need to use the analog stick. Also, shouts out to Kevin's more efficient. Yeah, those blocks that when you hit them, they make the... <laughs> That's Kevin. That's the guy who did the sound effects for this game. Yep. He's a great guy. Shout out to Kevin. There's lots of wonderful varied sound effects in this game, and there's also Kevin warbling into a microphone. <laughs> Underwater. I love you, Kevin, by the way. So Teach said that he will come back later to collect the hot water. Woo, get that block out of the way immediately. He wants none of that. <laughs> but Teach said he'll come back later to get the heart and the cassette. That's an interesting point. He thinks it works out better that way because that's how Teach does it. You don't have to do any of this in any strict order. He likes yeah, to go yeah. 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B, so on and so forth. There's no strict order that you have to do any of that in. You can mix it up how you please. Yep, you just need to get the first uh, 16 hearts before the C sides are That's unlocked. it. That's the only like, prerequisite. So you can do the B sides in pretty much any order you like prefer, really. No. Yeah. You can do them all back to back after the A sides. So this is hollows. There's actually a bunch of branching paths here. Um, but as speedrunners, we found the most optimal one. So that's, those are the ones T is picking. And with these bumpers, uh, one thing Teej is going to be able to demonstrate is uh, if you hit the bumper and you're holding away from it on the frame that you uh, hit the bumper, you will actually get a double boost from it. A double boost can be good and bad. Like, sometimes it's good because you can get a large boost. Sometimes it's bad because yep. you can kill yourself with I'm, it. I'm actually going to try and go through a bumper on the screen. See if it works. Yes, when you hit them, they deactivate for a bit, so you can end up on the other side yep. just like that. That's difficult. That's know, I've never been able to difficult. get any one of those at all. Nice ultra into the feather, so it immediately shoots him forward. Yep, we're gonna try and squeeze in between two middle bumpers here, Make the and there we go. Yeah. yeah, nicely done. And you might not remember this lady. She was in the prologue, laughing at us. <laughs> here she now, is again, laughing now, at us. Now she's motivating us, and laughing at us still. Still laughing at us. <laughs> she thinks everything's funny. Are there any cutscenes where she doesn't laugh? No, I think there are. I don't think she likes Madeline very much. I think Mad she does deep down. Madeline's not the most polite mountain climber. She just, she just has an odd way of showing her affection. The, the only swimming in the game, right here. Thank yep. you, Matt, yeah, for not making you. any water levels. <laughs> I really appreciate this it. This was actually was, yeah, this was supposed to be a water level like early in development, and then uh, thankfully, it is no longer. It's a very nice jump coming up here. Teach showing off a little during the. Auto this school. is one of my favorites. It's a big boost. We call this the yep. Madeline boost. Whoosh! Straight in, baby. Nicely done. And now uh, onto the battle and fight where we just have to hurl ourselves into battle and repeatedly to reach the end of the screen. It's the closest thing this game has to a boss fight. Yeah. So this uh, this section is just like uh, really nice music and really tight mechanics. Uh, so just let you guys enjoy the show here until we get to the ultra screens here in just a second. You want to take a donation or two? Sure thing. We have a $500 donation from Woo! Chris Ganso. That says, this is it, GDQ. Just breathe. Why are you so nervous? You can do this. We also have a $500 donation from Fast B. 
that says, I don't need a dollar for each of my cumulative deaths in this game, <laughs> but that would probably bankrupt me. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bad decision there. <laughs> And then we have a uh, $100 donation from Lena Rain that says, Hey all, it's always amazing to see Celeste speedruns, even if it means the music gets a cut a little short. I tuned in at SGDQ and it was amazing to hear everyone singing along to the music. Go fast, you can do this. Thanks, Lena. Shout out. <laughs> all right, now we're in the second half of the fight. Get a little bit of remix to the music here. Yep. Uh, these blocks were actually moving after Teach hit battle line before, but now they start moving uh, preemptively. But Teach still doesn't care. He's just going to go fast. Squats under that projectile there. Doesn't want to die. Uses the momentum there from the block pushing him up to get to the top of the screen. Always little abuses everywhere. Just go as far as he possibly can. He's going to do Punchy's favorite reverse right yeah, here. Yeah, this, this reverse ultra. This saves like three frames. It's pointless. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> but he does it anyway. Like, if you, if you mess that up, you die. But everyone seems to do it. And I'm just like, why? Slust is all about making the room five times harder to save like 0.2 seconds. But three frames, though, man. <laughs> That's not going to work. Three. Uh, That's OK. okay. Be play it safe. There we go. Nice. <laughs> Plays it safe. Completes the boss fight. So at the end of Chapter 6, uh, Battle Line and Madeline reconcile their differences and combine into one super line. And uh, <laughs> you, you now have uh, two dashes, as you can see from the pink hair. Um, we have now become Pink Celeste. But <laughs> Peach is going to relinquish all those powers to go into 6B. But uh, first, we have to get the heart and the yep, set to we do have that. Yeah, we don't get to have fun with our two dashes just yet. We've got more stuff to do. All right, so there's some fun stuff coming up. Um, I am going to hopefully pull this strat off. I can't guarantee anything. Uh, this, I don't even know what you'd call this. I Same. very rarely get this. I'd call this Revo's nonsense. <laughs> Do we have Revo's oh, nonsense? Oh, oh Revo's nonsense! Whoa! Yeah. That was, okay. That was not supposed to work. <laughs> that is so precise. Oh, baby. Okay, so uh, as for the 6A heart, um, I actually, uh, I, uh, the, the former world record holder, I don't know the code for the 6A heart, so I'm going to, uh, I'm going to pass <laughs> off the controller <laughs> to my good friend, Ben Teasy, and let him input the heart code. Oh, I, I always forget you have a different dash. Yeah, dash on circle. You got this, Ben. <laughs> you're witnessing the first, you're witnessing the world record for all chapters co-op right now. <laughs> I almost forgot. We got it. <laughs> yeah. Give it up for Ben. Thanks, Ben. No problem. You're here to hear, folks. Best co-op. <laughs> yeah, Tej usually has like a little notepad document open on the side of his monitor with the optimal way to put the dashes. Yep. But uh, you know, there's a different setup from home, so helping him out. Here we got permanent hey yas. Here's Ben's favorite level. All right. Mmm. This, oh. <laughs> this might be the hardest level of the game. I think so. Yeah, it's, it's one of the more t uh, difficult ones for sure. Yep. Shout out to Revo. Yeah, so we keep mentioning Revo. He's a South American runner. Um, fortunately, had a few issues, couldn't make it to the to GDQ, but he is notorious for just coming up with the most insane strats, and he's such a good guy. So uh, Tej actually donated um, $500 uh, earlier in the marathon uh, that we had raised to get him here, but unfortunately it wasn't meant to be. So yeah. He went was, to charity. He was supposed to be here to run Freedom Planet, but stuff happened and now he can't. And it's really a shame because he is one of the most talented runners I think any speedrun community has ever had. He's yeah. in ridiculous. He's credit to this game and every game he's ever touched. Yeah, so shout out once more to Revo. We miss you, man. And hopefully you can make it to the next one. That was kind of weird. <laughs> Literally no floor. I'm just going to keep bringing it up. <laughs> How to design a B-side. Delete the floor. <laughs> I'm sure it's more complex than that, but I feel like that was on the drawing board when they were designing the levels. <laughs> oh, boy. So, fun, fun fact about uh, these screens right here. These screens were originally supposed to be in the A-side, uh, according to Matt Thorson. And uh, I'd just like to personally thank Matt for not making these part of the A-side. <laughs> 
Uh, there's a couple of these ravine screens in a row, so if you want to go ahead and read a donation or two. Sure thing. We have a $10 donation from the Mount Celeste Search and Rescue. Madeline's Dash Mission, dine on those demo dashes. Well, for only one easy payment of all your money, we will find it for you. No, response may take several days and not guaranteed. For our slogan is, climbing mountains have never been easier. Trademark, teach love. <laughs> I wonder if I could subscribe to that service. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. We also have a $500 donation from uh, Foo Poop. Yeah. <laughs> Had to throw in another donation from one of my favorite games of all time, Celeste. I remember seeing this at SGDQ last year, and it's no less impressive this time around. Too bad we don't get to hear more of the music. I agree. Agreed. Dime so we can hear more of the music. <laughs> Apple Music and Spotify. True. Yeah, the soundtrack is on Spotify for those of you that want to listen to it some more. Also, hey, if you are watching this live, uh, this game is currently free on Xbox Live if you have uh, Xbox Live Gold. So please play this game. Or just buy the game. It's amazing. That too. It was, that. it was up for Game of the Year. It is incredibly good. It won Indie Game of the Year at the Game Awards. Yep. Yep. But it, it's it's not often you see an indie game be even nominated for Game of the Year, so... No, it really isn't. Just credit to the developers, like, once again. We're, it might sound like we're overselling them, but the game is really, really... No, this is definitely, the, this is definitely the best game I played the year it came out. Like, definitely. <laughs> so this is a bit of a complex screen. You have to get all these lock switches while in a feather, while avoiding battle line, while not landing, because there's no floor. <laughs> At least he put a platform. That platform wasn't there for us originally. He had pity on us that we were dying at the end of the screen. And patched it in for us. Yeah, the, the game is on Switch and Xbox and PS4 and PC. So, no excuse. <laughs> no, you have to play the game. <laughs> oh, this screen has a very interesting strat here. Uh, Tej is actually going to wait just a tear. On the, at this end spec, uh, section right here for this dash crystal to respawn so that he can... Oh, oh I went early. Wow. Okay. Yeah, uh, he he was he wanted to skip having to go to the right side of the room there and use the other Kevin blocks to get back. So he's just gonna use that. Okay. Excuse me. Okay. You can do it however <laughs> you want, Teach. I'll stop telling you how to do it. Yeah, quit distracting me, dude. <laughs> <laughs> hey. There, there we go. go. All right, I'm gonna try something on the screen too. I cannot guarantee I'm gonna get this. This stress pretty difficult. You're gonna try some things. Nope. Oh. All right, whatever. It's fine. Yeah, so like we said, there's no cap to... Okay, we get to try it again. ...to Madeline's acceleration. So when you combine these moving platforms okay. with downward, downright dashes... Fair tries to chomp. I believe in Come you. Come on. Ooh. Close. Had the speed. Didn't quite get the squad under. Yeah! Oh, yeah that's you go. go through this bumper right here. And what? Okay, whatever. That's fine. <laughs> We don't, we don't need that other one. And all these lock switches right here. Nah. We don't need any of that, too. We're just going to squeeze through here. Puzzles? Thanks. Nope. Oh. Get a nice little reverse ultra dash right here. Get some speed. So these rooms are all on tight slides. So he just barely slips under the laser beam there without getting killed. That time he goes this this strat is really cool right here. <laughs> we don't need any of that. Ah! Madeline getting a haircut with the laser. <laughs> This screen is very particular with cycles. Uh, I am very carefully managing my movement here in order to avoid these lasers. And uh, that's a good okay, I'm fine, I'm fine. We're good. We're good. No panic. We're good. I, I believe that was the instance of Teach going for a double bumper boost, but uh, not getting that, unfortunately. Battle line is surprisingly accurate. Just give a little cheeky cycle. There we yep. go. Yep. So. We <laughs> have that. He did not have his dash when he touched the heart, but when you touch the heart but aren't dashing, you bounce off it. But when you bounce off it, you get your dash back. So if you're ready for it, you can dash straight into it again and just barely save yourself. You can just look at the top, top of the heart. Yeah, and we'll definitely see that uh, on, on the different B side as well as some of the C sides. Okay, so the way 7A works is, uh, so there's a heart at the end of the chapter, but you won't be able to get it until you get these, uh, these six gems that are scattered throughout in each area. Uh, so we'll be getting those along the way. Other than that, it's pretty much an any percent summit. Also, T has two dashes now, and that lets you do a lot of fun things. And with a lot of fun things. With Chapter 7, we will be revisiting the themes of all the previous chapters. Uh, this section is kind of like the Chapter 6 section, 
But uh, the next section will revisit chapter one and we'll be going through all of those uh, level gimmicks with two uh, dashes this time around, which essentially means no floor. Okay, it tries to, it gives you a little trick here because the gem's actually off the right side of the screen. It's like, don't get the purple thing, get the gem. Yeah. And the, the purple circle there is, as you can see, it's battle line and she's throwing us up into the next tire. You actually can't beat the screen um, to get to the next section unless you have battle line at the top of the screen. So even if she's off to the side and it might be kind of slow to go get her, Teach has to go get her so that he can continue to the next section. Let's take a little detour around here to get to the heart instead of taking the strict lo uh, route. Because the heart's yeah. off in a weird place. And these yep. platforms are merely suggestions. We don't need any of them. It's a little hole there. Ah. This ultra's tight. Yeah, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually self-destruct after uh, after getting this gem. And it's going to take me back here and allow me to advance a little quicker through here. Yeah. Siege basically just wants to get more money out of Duke. That's what's happening. <laughs> 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 just yelled, it doesn't count. <laughs> Nice little bunny hop here to skip that springs. Springs are slow. Uh, gonna get up here, and then we're gonna try to grab the corner of this block to activate it early. Nicely nice. done, gets it out of the way early. And then we're gonna come up here, and that's the 500. Well done. All right, so now that we have two dashes, uh, you'll be seeing Teach hyper dash out of these dream blocks like crazy. Uh, because we have another dash to deal with after he performs the move. It's much more effective when you have two dashes to work with. Like, you can do it with one dash, but then you have no dash afterwards. Like, what are you gonna do? You just have no dash in the air. You're very sad. When you have two dashes, you can do fun things like that. And this. Yeah, and this is a bunch of combinations of corner boost, hyper dashes, and double jumps out of these dream blocks. So, this, this is definitely, like, mastery of Celeste being demonstrated right here. It is nowhere near as easy as it looks. The, fr the frame window for getting a hyper out of a dream block as well is not big. I um, think it's hard. Not at all, yeah. But he just... I haven't seen him miss one. I know that's tempting fate, but like, no. Hit, hit, or hit. Don't jinx me, Punchy, I'm please. trying really hard. <laughs> you can even do it going down <laughs> yep. with no yep. floor. No floor, still and, hits it. And you can do it off of spikes. Like so. Like right here. All hit. No miss. <laughs> That was Brilliant. I love that section. This section, however, can kick rocks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. It's aggressively cycle-based, just like the stage of which it's based. And yeah, these strats are all kind of hard and kind of tight. Can I go for a cycle? Squeeze in here. Oh. Unfortunately. Tough. Yeah, that one's pretty tough. Yeah. We can just go back here. Yeah, this is where the cassette's hiding. Get to hear a little bit of cassette music because this one he actually has to wait. And then again, when you see Teach dash into the floor, he's trying to delay the uh, in game timer. How dare they make us wait? <laughs> Goodbye, cassette music. We loved you. All right, back to cycles. Um, oops. Pause. <laughs> 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 you, wanted no, um, you wanted none of those cycles. There was a, there's no pause buffers in this game that I know of. Shut up. <laughs> there is now. All right, we, we got my favorite room right here. This is the ultra dash room. Fast, fast, more fast. Get that thin platform, gets his dash back, and then goes low. Fast, like the jet. fast. Self-destruct here stays the whole time as well. You can do that super quickly as well. It's nice how you can self-destruct or return to map, like, literally as soon as you touch the gem. It, it registers immediately. Frank or Z? Yeah, you might have not noticed, but the dust bunnies in that room are actually shaped a little bit like a puppy. Yep. So, uh, Is shout that out why that yep. happened? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> shout out to the famous Twitch emote, Frank Z. I've gone this entire time without knowing why people do that. <laughs> I was too scared to ask. So the gem in this section is actually like really far out of the way here. So what TJ is going to do is he's actually going to go get it, and then he's going to return to the map and load up the section again and start from the beginning just to save a little bit of time in-game. Yep, this saves about two seconds for a human. He interrupted the glorious music, but we're going to let him slide. <laughs> it saves time. Yeah. So now he can go up the upper route instead. And get a nice little sequence of hyper dashes Ooh. off of these clouds. Free berry! Let's see if he can keep this one till the end. He always tries. Oh boy, okay, I'll try. I'm gonna put the right. pressure on you. Berries do not collect unless you touch the ground for nine frames of each. It is possible to carry berries for ludicrous periods of time. Sometimes, even Double if berry. you don't want them to. Double, Double berries. berries. 
So these these um moving blocks Bakes. don't get don't count as safe ground. So the berry won't collect even though he's Ooh, oh, nice. nice. That's the auto scroller skip there. Lands it. Lands it. I'm trying really hard. Oh. To <laughs> I'm trying so hard. <laughs> These don't count. It's fine. This has no bearing on the run, like whatsoever. By the way, I'm no. <laughs> he just wants to keep the berries. Oh, no, I one collected. One. Oh, what? okay. I think I wave dash too, like too with too much of a separation. That was nine frames. Okay, I, don't know, I, don't, I don't think. This so. is a cool wall bounce right here, around the corner. Takes like a circular motion around it. And this He's screen has a, berry. has another demo dash. This is the crouch dash we were talking about earlier. He's just gonna squeeze into this little crevice right here. And yep. Skips having to grab that block to activate it and gets to go fast. And we, right, kept we, the berry. Kept, we kept the berry. Yep. That's as far as you can take it, by the way, because Battle Line makes you automatically collect the. the... <laughs> that is actually insane that you're able to carry that the entire way. There's no purpose to doing this. So he just does it because he can. <laughs> oh, yeah. Orb. <laughs> Orb. Orb. Why is there suddenly a chant occurring? Orb. I'm. I'm... I'm scared. I have no idea what's going on. I'm very scared. <laughs> don't worry about it. Just, it's, just it's a roll new with meme. It. Don't don't worry. Just let yeah, it. Yeah, just roll just with let it. Be. <laughs> oh, that's wow. Okay. All right, he's just gonna do something really cool here. He's gonna do like a double spike jump or spike wall jump. Boing boing, boing boing. Don't need to go around yeah. the lower path to get the bubble. Just yep. do that. It's great. This next screen is one of my favorite screens. You're gonna he's gonna do some interesting movement here. Go under here. Oh, and die. Every time. Oh, court, court. I, I I can't talk. And nice. <laughs> Have to thread the needle. Eight. Ooh, clean. Forget these doors. We're not opening them. Big door skip. Big door skip. <laughs> Run valid. So that trick, like when it was found, was among like the oh, this is the ultimate in like big. Barely saves any time, but it's really difficult tricks. It has since been very much supplanted in terms yeah. of difficulty, but it remains very fondly liked. <laughs> there are lots of circles in this game. They all orbs now, I guess. Okay, so the heart for Chapter 7 is right here at the beginning of... Uh, Give him a second, guys. He's got to get the heart first, and then you guys. Can... Yep. <laughs> <laughs> He's actually going to return to map after. Oh, it's saving quote, I believe, after getting the heart here. So the heart here is going to show that all the gems were collected, and it's going to bring down the heart. There's actually an invisible wall where those spikes are. So even if you make yourself invincible, you can't get up there. You have to just have the gems. Yep. So we're saving quit there just because it skips the heart text. Uh, I'm pretty convinced that that's like the only source of sign save okay. that, of uh, of time save for uh, saving quitting. Meanwhile, everyone counts down from 28. <laughs> all right, Chad, I want to see all the numbers. Come on. Let you guys enjoy 3,000 meters in the chant. <laughs> 25, 23. Love to count with Celeste. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't get all these flags, but... So the wind is, like, pushing down on him right now as well, which limits his jump height. Did you just... Okay. And yes, I did just jump yes, on spike, by the way. I wasn't sure if I saw that properly. That's an effect of the wind pushing him down. Yes. I don't know why it does that, but it does that. 19. I'm doing it now. I should stop. <laughs> that ain't my job. That's their job. And now we're in the updraft section, with this, uh, which is essentially slash with low gravity. This is a glorified Mega Man water level right now. It's just, <laughs> you're just, it, this was Matt tricking us into thinking there was no water level. Jesus, it's kind of thing that's differently framed. It kind of is like a no. underwater feel, isn't it? The, the physics. <laughs> I ruined Can it for Punchy. <laughs> Cannot unsee. It's all framing. <laughs> nice little neutral wall jump here to uh, get over those spikes. He's not touching it. No, nope, doesn't count. No, no, no. Will he get nine, though? Okay, he gets nine. <laughs> Skip Give as many as too. possible. <laughs> They get so sad. <laughs> Six. <laughs> what number is orb again? <laughs> <laughs> he didn't touch it. No. I Don't touch it. Oh. <laughs> 
I love this audience. <laughs> you guys are fantastic. Oh, uh, he can save this. He can save this. Nice, 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 nice. Very nice, good. Nice. Very this good. Is fine, smooth. Will he get two? Will he skip it? Oh, oh he, he tried. tried. He tried. You tried. Oh my God. Okay. Okay. Well, good, good thing. Good thing you got it. You got it. <laughs> See the audience, we're helping you, Tej. <laughs> oh, <I know. laughs> Rude, Tej. And that's chapter seven. All right, so. <laughs> So that is where the any percent run would end. Uh, however, we are not even close to done yet. Um, we still have 7B and Chapter 8 and all the seasides to go. <laughs> what? <laughs> Bit much. All right, so now we're going to move into 7B, which is personally my favorite chapter to speed run. This level is pretty awesome. Really? 7B? Mm-hmm. I'm a fan of 2B. Yeah, once again, a remix of all the stages themes in one go. And this is, if 6B is not the hardest level in the game, this one is. That's what I think. It's long. Lots See, of pause, pause buffers. Buffer. That's it. All right. <laughs> we have a real pause buffer now. Uh, the, the first, like, two sections of this level are just really tight platforming. So if you wanted to read a donation. So we have a $1,000 donation from Woo! Bulligen. Thank you, Bulligen. He says, my brother donated earlier saying he couldn't afford to donate for each of his casual debts, but I can. <laughs> <laughs> I think this donation gets us about halfway there. And then we have a $10,000 oh, donation wow. from the Yeti. Hey, y'all, Yeti here. Here's $10,000. Thanks to everyone picking up shirts to support this amazing cause. Had to donate during the Celeste run. It is always so impressive to see. A special shout out uh, to the audio team behind this game, Power Up Audio. They are amazing people who make great games sound incredible. Thank you so much for that, 10, that 10K. Ooh. Close. This is a tight one. He tries to get this one little jump around. Come on, it requires man. A, a max height jump off the ledge. You got this. That's the one. There we go. There you go. Orb. Can confirm. Orb. Oh. Metal for parkour master. So we'll be double jumping and hypering out of uh, out of these as well. Like so. There's a hyper. A little cool skip in this room right here. So instead of taking it all the way to the right, we just do that. Yeah, and that was possible because he grabbed the block on the side and changed um, like how far he dashed through it. But so he abuses the fact that you can double jump out of blocks uh, a lot in this room to avoid having to grab the right wall instead because there's one patch there that doesn't have spikes on the sides. Alternatively, you just double jump out of them. Abuse that. This section here is notorious casually for being so difficult, uh, especially the last screen. Chapter three, it's the hardest chapter in other chapters. See if we can go underneath <laughs> here. There we go. Oh, oh, sick. Oh, and then I die, of course. <laughs> Don't be so dramatic. Come on, man. I will get through this screen eventually. There we go. Take your time. Jeez. This screen right here is the cycle is so annoying because it, it's you don't have a way to stop your movement to uh, get through. But Teach has a nice try in that room, and that was really good there. A nice little delay. That's a bubble. <laughs> <laughs> I'll accept all for the purple things. <laughs> <laughs> Bubbles on the orbs. <laughs> <laughs> nice little wind and snowballs here. Trying to stop us. Snowballs! <laughs> I'll accept this. 
This is okay. <laughs> That's a coin. That's not an orb. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Audience versus the couch. They can be an orb if they want to be. <laughs> this game has actual orbs, though. <laughs> That's not one of them. Oh, enjoy. There's a lot of these. <laughs> 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 it's progressing. We're now saying every object in the game. <laughs> they just want to contribute. I'd hate to be the bearer of bad news, guys. We are skipping an orb. Orb skip. Uh, they don't care. There's enough orbs. <laughs> Whole chat is spamming orb. <laughs> Thanks, Chad. Is it so the interesting part about this section right here is uh, actually that um, the game hasn't taught you how to wall bounce yet. You can touch but it. Teej is going to wall bounce through all of this to skip a bunch of these segments. I'm just going to let them do them. <laughs> if they want. You could get some of the uh, <laughs> some of the communities to work on uh, labbing out an orbless run. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is orbs by number with TGH. Yep. <laughs> it's like a coloring book. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was brought to you by the letter O. <laughs> oh. Nice cloud skip. Just skip that one too. There we go. I'm gonna try to do this without grabbing. The mad lad. There we go. Nice scoop. Nice done. <laughs> I love you guys. <laughs> We love you, too. All right, that's our bird. That's fine. Yeah, one last one. This is where the game would normally teach you how to do the wall jump. Yep. You know, the thing we've been doing the entire game? Yeah. And it, it's when you realize that all of these alternate strats are consciously developed into the levels, you, you start to get, like, a newfound appreciation for the game uh, when you just realize Oh, yeah, watch this. Oh, right <laughs> through this fight. Oh, dash. Teaches magic. <laughs> what? <laughs> what I don't was even, that? I have no idea. Diamond. One. No more of this. <laughs> we have reached the top again. But we're not done. <laughs> this might possibly be the most difficult room of this type. Just for many, many months of TTS Thursday has prepared yeah. me for this moment. <laughs> many, many months. That's very true. There's, there was a reason behind it all. How to do a speed run with hundreds of people yelling at you? <laughs> stream on Twitch. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, okay. Yep. You want to explain Core, Ben? Yeah, sure. Uh, core is a, a unique chapter in the sense that it's the only chapter that doesn't replenish her dashes when you touch the floor. So you'll see here, Madeline's hair is going to turn red, then it's going to turn blue, and until she picks up the dash crystal, she doesn't actually get her dashes back. Yes. So you, I was okay. just going to say, it's really interesting. Uh, the strats that got, have gotten developed for Core, because it's basically uh, finding the most efficient ways to use your dashes. Also, every time Teach jumps, like bunny hops, uh, he's going to save two frames. It's something to do with how it sets your speed value, I think. Yeah, it's an inherent speed boost that you get from jumping, I believe. All right, so we're going to skip uh, this entire right side right here by just going through these fireballs here. Nope. <laughs> yeah, normally you're supposed to go very far to the right to change that to ice, which is the main mechanic of core. We're going to see that in just a second here. Um, but Tej 
is just immune to fireballs. So This will occur a few times throughout the core levels where if you do certain skips in certain ways, it will start the next room in either hot or ice when it's not supposed to be. And yet, despite that, at no point does it ever become, like, unwinnable. Yeah. It uh, almost seems intentionally designed that way. Thanks, Interesting. Matt. Thanks, Matt. You're saying they did it on purpose. Yeah. This game's great. Skip the switch there. They did. Nice little strat here. Ooh. Nice. And still has his dashes, so he can still dash out of the room at the end. Very spicy. So we core, also a lot of cycles with these moving fireballs. And now we have lava. Yeah, uh, that lava's a little too slow to catch up to Teach. But uh, as long as he avoids these fireballs, he oh. should be fine. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that was a little close. Another haircut. Pause a little bit there to get the spike lilac for this room. Oh. And these blocks are all completely optional. <laughs> he just <laughs> did not need any of them. See if we can get some extreme vertical speed there. There we go. Good. This so you can actually wall, wall, bang, wall bouncing off of those conveyor belts, like actually, uh, they give you like pretty much double speed going off of them. He saved this one dash from the very beginning of the room so he can use it here at the end to get to the top and skip the crystal on the right. This room is really tight too. It's really nice. Gets around there. Ah, I'm not going to go for that. All right. And now for this part, we have lava on the top, too. Yeah, the ceiling is lava. Because physics. And now it's ice. So the good thing about the sw hitting the switches is that it changes the, the which direction the lava is flowing, or the ice. So uh, uh, the strats through the room and making sure you're hitting the switches in such a way that you're able to get through without uh, having the lava catch up to you. This next screen here, um, not, I'm sorry, not this one. It's the one after this. The next screen after this has a unique strat where Teach is actually going to preserve his dash all the way to the next room so that he can, uh, I'm talking about a different level. <laughs> that is in the B side, I was, about, I was about to say, like, what am I doing then? I, I, <laughs> is this a new strat? You're doing excellent feather movement. Keep it up. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Fun fact, you can actually demo dash out of feathers. There's no real known application for it yet, but... There is, but it's like, it's not something I'm going to be going for. I think it's in, yeah. in uh, 60. As Punchy pointed out. Yeah. And now we're in outer space. And the screen loops. And the physics are halved. Uh, basically, you fall twice as slow. And you... uh, been... That's not good. I've... I've been playing this game for almost a year, and I still don't understand why it's like that. I don't get the symbolism either. <laughs> I'm sure there's something to it, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> but that's 8A. <eight> a. <laughs> OK. So cool. Uh, Corby has the same mechanics, but actually has a little cutscene at the start where it checks to see if you have the other 15 hearts um, before it unlocks. So we have time for a donation or two. Uh, so we have a $20 donation from Zerulsil that says, noun, orb, <laughs> plural noun, orbs, <laughs> one, a spherical body, a glow, your definition of an orb. <laughs> I'll give you a definition of an orb. <laughs> <laughs> we also have an anonymous $1,451 donation. Wow. Is that a death count? Yep. Went to check, and here's $1 per death for my casual Celeste playthrough. Also, orb. I see what the next meme is. <laughs> it continues. Next. I think we have time for one more. And then we have a $10 donation um, from Day Dallas 216 that says, this comment dedicated to those who perished on the climb. So once again, no flaw. So this is the screen that Ben was talking about where yeah. uh, he's going to keep his dash throughout the entire uh, way so that he can dash into the next screen and uh, just propel himself <laughs> forward. Or I'm going to die on that spike. That was intentional. <laughs> That was just to showcase. Um, he was giving know, us just, more time just, to explain the strat to you. Yeah, guys. thanks, Change. Yeah, we just in case it. you miss it the other 50 times, that's that's what it looks like when you die. So yeah, he skipped that uh, that core block there, 
And also, it is very particular where you grab these blocks, and when you jump off of them, um, your trajectory can definitely go wild. It's extremely analog, so like it's very hard to be exact with it. Whoops. Whoa. Okay. Did not mean to land on that guy. Whoops. Let me do this. So yeah, the undersides of these kill you. They're spiky. But I also find it's a bit particular about what counts as the side or not. Okay, squeezes through that yeah. time. There we go. Little kick off those spikes. Tiny little optimization. And this room was the room that I found to be nightmarish, casually. Yes. Nice, gets the first try. Yeah, these next few rooms are very cycle-based, and uh, if you're a little bit off-cycle, it can be kind of hard uh, to react. This one in particular. I actually like to baby these rooms and uh, get rid of all of the uh, the icicles, or the ice yep. versions of the fireballs, and then proceed. So this room had a switch at the start that was actually supposed to turn it into lava. And you're supposed to use these core blocks to like propel yourself through the stage, but Tej is just using a bunch of advanced strats to keep it in ice and actually skip all of the intended mechanics for these two screens there. Fortunately, can't do it here. Again, still possible to complete the levels despite them being in completely the wrong mode. It's a testament to the, the solidness of the level design. It's very well put together. Here we have a little uh, homage to every single mechanic from the other levels. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to try to not activate... Oh, he's going to try to not activate this block from the left so he can actually get a little bit further with his dash. And that's going to save him a little bit of time there. Nice bumper wow. boost there. Yeah, block-based gimmicks that require you to actually, like, grab them to activate, you can just jump off them without activating them. It's difficult, but you can do it. So this is the room I thought Teach was in before, where he was going to keep his dash. Oh, I'm sorry. I... And, uh, yeah, he's going to hyper into this room, and that allows him to skip that first switch Ooh. there. Very I'm gonna, tight. I'm going to try something here, too. He's going to try I'm going to keep this room in ice. Excuse me. And... Reverse. Corner boost. Oh! Nice. Big play! That was huge. <laughs> So now that he's kept it in ice, these spikes are actually not supposed to be blue. Yeah, if you've played this game, this room didn't look like this when you were here. A nice little demo dash through Sneak here. Through. Oh, oh, thanks, Hart. <laughs> <Boing. laughs> okay. We're officially done with all the A sides, all the B sides. Yep. We now have the C sides. The C sides are small, concentrated levels of extreme difficulty. They're all three screens long, though some of them cheat on what really is a screen. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna let you guys enjoy this. The yep. C sides here. Um, yeah, feel free to uh, feel free to get excited for these. By the way, just like yeah, let's get some hype. Some let's get some let's hype get going. Hype. Let's get hype, guys. Come on. Oh, uh, almost saved it. Nice jump. Skips that entire middle section there. And that's one C. Very good. All right, so 2C, um, I'm actually going to go for something called keyless. Um, so at the end, basically there's a screen at the end, the, the last screen, where there's a bunch of coins that you're supposed to get uh, in order to move a block where you need to go to advance. Uh, I'm going to try my best to avoid the coin. Well, I'm going to avoid the coins, but I'm going to try my best to get the three pixel wide window on the diagonal dash at the end here. Yeah, so. And then the jumps up are, the, are pretty tricky too, so let's see if I can get those. So normally missing the coin would make this impossible. Ooh! Nice. Yes. There we go. First try on that, man. GG. Three pixel. I haven't <laughs> seen him miss it. Three pixel window, though. Three C. There's a bunch of. Uh, there's a bunch of. Uh, there's a strat that you can do on the first and second string of the screen to uh, basically skip a lot of it. Like for, this. For the life of me, I could not figure out how to do oh, this okay. one. Oh, okay. All right. 
There we go. This is everyone's favorite seaside, right? Extreme timing. Skips all that with a well placed hyper dash. So I wait for the cycle I like here and then I go. It's your boy Oshiro. He's back. So this level will actually force you to use the mechanic where you need to get a bounce off Oshiro's head to regain your dash. I don't think either the A or B sides technically forces you to do this. On the C side, you have to do it. 29. 29. <laughs> So the seaside is very high difficulty, but very short, because these have all been averaging about 30 seconds each. Of course, that only happens if you're as good as Tejas. I, I was going to say average, like, 10. I was actually more like 34 since I died on the first screen, but, like, the IL timer resets when you die, so... Like 30 does not mean precisely. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Bubbles! <laughs> they get louder when I get insistent about it. <laughs> so, yeah, did Death not manage to put an auto-scroller in the uh, seasides? Don't be mean! <laughs> okay, clouds are definitely not orbs. I know that... <laughs> I mean, they can be if they're shaped a certain Stop. way. Stop. Don't encourage them. Will he go for the one block wide hyper? Dave Dash. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> you made me do that, Punchy. <laughs> you made me do that. I totally did. I'll do it again. Thank you. Just for me. You're good pal. <laughs> Yeah, right. there you go. There we go. I just want to say we have a $25 donation from Alex the Ordinary that says, who replaced the audience with the Celeste Cienze? <laughs> <laughs> 5C plays the 5B theme, so best side by default. Oh, that's two screens down. Nine seconds. We'll skip this bubble right here, go straight around like that. Or skip the orb, I suppose. <laughs> I guess there are orbs now. 27 seconds. Who's averaging 30 now? All right, so this next seaside actually has some really sick strats on the last screen. I know Teacher's going to go for it at least yeah, once. Yeah, I'm going to go for the, the ultra once. This is my favorite. I love this. We'll let Punchy narrate the first trick. He you does have it to? With very good trick. Yeah, you have to. <laughs> yeah, you have so to. Cool. <laughs> okay, I will. The first he's got to get there, he's got to do these falling sections. But they're short, luckily. This section was so hard for me casually until I realized you could use the analog. So normally you have to like route a block all the way around this maze. Alternatively, you can bring it up, go under, knock it down, fast fall to beat it, go straight around, land back on top when it hits the bottom, and then knock it to the side and get a big ultra. Woo! <laughs> so close. You see that's why, why that's my favorite though, right? <laughs> yes. That's the best strat. <laughs> yeah. That was really close. That was close. <laughs> It's, Bless you uh, for trying, Tej. I love that. And that's just another good example of how fast you can get in this game by combining like the different sources of momentum. One. Okay. <laughs> Everybody's favorite seaside. Yep. Hold your Wa breath. Wall bounce city. The precision. This one's all about that minute precision. To me, this next screen here is just one of the coolest screens in the game. It's a gauntlet. They even bother to put binoculars there so you can see all of it. That's how long it is. One block wide wall jump. Let's squeeze through here. Who needs floor? Well, he's really just going to casually no death this, huh? Yeah. Oh. Okay. It's the Teach special. Okay. <laughs> right. And there's the old lady. Damn. I'm very curious how the old lady got there. <laughs> yeah, there's no elevator staff there for her to <laughs> climb down. I'm not, so. not going to question it, but she must be really good at dashing. 
All right, last level. So uh, time is actually going to come up uh, here when the golden heart appears on the screen after I touch the, or after the graphic of the gold heart uh, comes up on screen. So it's going to appear right in the center, and that's going to be time. So yeah. that bird there actually teaches you how to do a hyper dash, that thing we've been talk like, talking yeah. about and doing the entire run. So like yeah. the, the developers know about it. It's an intentional thing. And when you get through this far to the end of the game, you play through all the challenges, then the game is like, but did you try moving like this? And it's like, Everything is different. Check out this hyper dash. Such a cool strat. But wait, there's ah. more. But wait. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, falling thing. down on a switch is uh, is a little faster since you climb up that quicker. We'll give it one diagonal dash. Ooh. Oh, All right, man. so time is coming up. Ha. And time. That's 128.03. Teach, turn around. <laughs> Okay, so, <laughs> all right. Uh, before we wrap it up here, first off, thank thank all of you so much. Thank you, that <laughs> I don't deserve that. Um, for real, uh, shout outs to the Celeste community. Uh, these guys have worked really hard to make the speed run what it is right now. Uh, you guys are all awesome, seriously. All the guys on the couch, thank you guys so much uh, for providing commentary and being awesome. Uh, thank all you guys for being you. <laughs> And for coming out, seriously, thanks for all the support. Um, thank you to uh, thank you to Matt Thorson, Noel Berry, the rest of Matt Makes Games. Uh, you guys made an absolutely amazing game, amazing speed game. You guys are fantastic. Just thank you so much. We had the privilege last year of having them on the couch along with our commentators, and that was a real treat. And uh, they are so in tune with the speedrunning community. It's it's wild. It's great to see devs so uh so connected with their their speedrun community it's really it's really great to see um and i think that's about it for me so thank you guys very much you guys are awesome give it up for Tej on his amazing run of celeste coming up we are going to the legend of zelda the wind waker hd by lingus 7 stay tuned because it is 100 percent you do not want to miss that. Just going to read a few, a uh, couple donations um, as we're getting squared away. Um, we have a $5 donation from Jetboy that says, Say bro backwards. Thank you so much. We also have a $250 donation from Boyne Classic that says, Orb, probably. Pro probably. We have a $500 donation from Shrike Linden. Thank you so much. Woo, yeah, let's get that for that. $500, come on, guys. That's a lot. It says, Celeste is one of my absolute favorite games of all time, and not just for the slick platforming and amazing soundtrack. We all have a battle in following us around. Anxiety, self-doubt, and imposter syndrome are old friends of mine. But I got a promotion and a raise last fall. It's time to pay forward. Cancer is a hell of a mountain, and let's make that climb faster. Thank you so much for that donation. That was beautiful. All right, we're, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, take a little bit of a intermission and ad break. Uh, so stay tuned. We'll be right back.
And now we're here to talk about Gris. Gris is a serene and evocative journey presented through stunning art and animation and a breathtaking soundtrack. It is available now on Nintendo Switch and PC. You can visit at grisgame.com for more about Gris and the developer Nomada Studio. Once again, welcome everyone to Awesome Games Done Quick 2019. I'm Edo Bean. I'm just going to read a couple of donations um, as we're still getting ready for setup. Um, I have a $50 donation from Library Nerd that says, shout out to the audience. You all embody the true meaning of Orb. <laughs> Ray Vincible uh, donates $100 that says, after a long day teaching, it's wonderful to watch a Celeste run with one of the best crowds ever. Here's to orbs, springs, clouds, and hearts. $20.35 donation from Zach Chappie that says, just beat the game for the first time about an hour ago. Great job. A penny for every death I had. That's actually really not bad. Let's be honest here. Ant and Liana, thank you for $500. He, woo, yeah, $500, let's go. Here's to one of our favorite games. Shout out to everyone at AGDQ for the hours of entertainment for a good cause. Ariel19 donates $126.18 that says, I love Celeste. Teach is amazing. One cent for each death on my main file. Altic donates one thousand dollars. <laughs> it says almost missed AGDQ this year, but so glad I was able to catch the run for Celeste. It's amazing seeing Madeline zipping across the screen. NBD. Just don't forget to breathe. I won't forget. <sighs> there we go. <laughs> like we also have an anonymous two thousand dollar donation. Keep them coming, guys. Watching Teach constantly break world records in Celeste has been a pleasure this past year. Let's beat Cancer and get that 5B skip and maybe that 3B demo. Nico Vio donates $640 saying, good evening, y'all. I'm a simple person. I see Celeste, I donate. That, that seems pretty, that, that is pretty simple, huh? That game is among my all-time favorites, and its amazing soundtrack will always bring tears to my eyes. Good luck with the run. Just breathe. You can do this. Greetings from Ireland. We have a $150 donation from Orb163. It says, I bought Celeste on Linux twice and the Switch thrice. I absolutely love everything about this game. Shout out to Lena for its amazing music. All right, and I think it's time for Scent to show us something. Uh, take it away, Scent. Well, thank you very much, Edo Bean. As you guys know, my name is Sent. I'm the prize coordinator here at uh, Games Done Quick, and I think that something might just be prizes. Maybe. Not sure yet. Uh, guys, just as a quick note before I get started, uh, the Fallout 3 Goss Rifle is still available. It's a $125 minimum donation, but you have to get those donations in before I am done with this interview. As soon as this interview ends, you're not going to be able to win it anymore, so get those donations in ASAP if it's something you're interested in, and I'll talk about it more a little bit later. Uh, real quick, before I get into some of the prizes, uh, something I really need to remind everyone is that Games Done Quick is donating all revenue from subs and bits in the month of January right back to the Prevent Cancer Foundation. That means, guys, if you subscribe to the channel, we're going to donate the money we receive from that right back to charity. That means if you donate, you know, 10 subs, uh, 100 subs to the community, all that revenue goes right back to charity. And most importantly, if you have Amazon Prime, you've got Twitch Prime. If you've got Twitch Prime, every month you can sub to a streamer for no cost to yourself, and that streamer still gets the full amount of revenue. So that means, hey, if you've got Twitch Prime, 
you can sub to us, and we will donate that revenue right back to charity. It's an amazing offer, guys. Make sure to get those subs in. Keep in mind, though, those subscriptions are not going to make you eligible for any prizes. So let's talk about some of the amazing prizes you guys can win. Most of the prizes we're going to be talking about right now are available from now until the end of The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. But keep in mind that Goss Rifle is going to end as soon as this interview is over. So get those donations in. Again, $125 is going to get you everything I'm talking about, except for the grand prize. We'll go over that in a minute. Now, first up, we have these beautiful Celeste Perlers from our friend Duke Firebird. You know, we got the Pico 8 tape. Love it. It's super adorable here. And as well as a collection of three hearts. You know, we got, we got some A side. We got some B side. And uh, I wish I had a third hand for this because we got some C side. Super cool little Perler collection. $5 minimum donation. Make sure to get in on it. Now, behind me, we have this beautiful Celeste-themed scarf. It's keeping Crocomire warm. Crocomire not included in the scarf. Keep anything warm, though. Oh, yep, sorry, Crocomire. I'm going to... Gonna have to take your scarf for a minute. Um, it's super beautiful. It's got a Celeste written down it. And it comes to us uh, directly from Matt Makes Games, uh, the guys behind Celeste, as well as our friends over at Fangamer. $10 minimum donation. Guys, you want this scarf. It's getting cold outside. We're looking at snow over the weekend over here in Rockville. So, hey, get those donations in from now until the end of Wind Waker. Speaking of Zelda, sorry, Crocomire, I'm just gonna put you on this table. We have the always wonderful Legend of the Hero from our great friend Kari Fry. Um, it's just full of all of her wonderful drawings and illustrations of Zelda characters. Let's pop it open to a random page here. Oh, yeah, it's, it's a good page. We got, we got cuckoos. I know Kari loves chickens. There we go. That, that one's for you, Kari. Uh, and as always, every time I talk about Kari's wonderful books, I have to mention the cool dust jackets because they are not only dust jackets, they always serve another purpose. In this case, it's a wonderful poster featuring a bunch of her artwork. Super cool. I love it. And guys, it's only a $5 minimum donation from now until the end of Wind Waker. So hey, make sure to get those donations in. Uh, from our good friend, Nel Mathira, we have a wonderful Breath of the Wild-themed selfie print. Um, you can see a great picture of it if you head over to our tracker, gamesdonequick.com. Uh, $5 minimum donation. Guys, you're going to want to get your donations in for that. It's super adorable. Uh, from our friends over at Beanie Coffee Illustrations, we have this wonderful Zelda-themed print. Guys, it's dangerous to go alone. You're going to need to take all of these things. Very important for your quest or your second quest, uh, depending on what you like to run. Personally, I'm a first quest kind of guy. Uh, $10 minimum donation from now until the end of the Wind Waker HD. Thank you so much to our friends over at Beanie Coffee Illustrations for uh, sending this out to us. Uh, over on the shelf across from me, we have a pair of beautiful glasses featuring um, the Triforce uh, and the Master Sword embedded into the pedestal, as well as a Korok. They both come with a fun Korok decal. It's a set of two. $10 minimum donation, and they come to us courtesy of the Artist Tree Shop. Uh, so huge shout-outs to the Artist Tree. Thank you guys so much for, uh, for getting those out to us. Uh, now, guys, finally, we talked about it earlier. I have to talk about it again. I have to talk about it as much as possible. From our good friends over at Bethesda, we have an amazing replica of the Fallout 3 Gauss Rifle made by the senior world editor of Fallout 3. Um, I mean, this thing is absolutely amazing. It's made of wood and metal and just about everything you could. The detail on it is just immaculate. Um, and not only that, it is signed by tons of members of the Bethesda Game Studios uh, dev team. Um, huge shout outs to them for bringing us this out. It's so cool, honestly. It really is. It's $125, but it's, it's a one of a kind piece. You're not going to be able to find anything like it anywhere else. And again, after this interview, you're not going to be able to win it. So make sure to get those donations in ASAP. Uh, one last thing to talk about. We can't talk about prizes without talking about our amazing grand prize, and that is a replica Master Sword and Hylian Shield uh, right across from me on that table there. Those guys are one-to-one -one replicas of the Master Sword and Hylian Shield from Breath of the Wild. They are full metal. They are absolutely gorgeous. They both weigh like 15 pounds. I've been trying to figure out how I can, uh, how I can include them in a skit somehow, but I, I just can't lift both of them at the same time. They're that good. They're super amazing replicas. Huge shout-outs to our friends over at Heroic Replicas for sending those out to us. And they are a $250 minimum donation throughout the marathon. But keep in mind, that's a cumulative $250. So hey, you get $125 in right now for that Gauss rifle, and you are already halfway there to getting an entry into the Master Sword and Hylian Shield, assuming you haven't donated anything else throughout the marathon. You know, get a little bit here, get a little bit there, and bam, you're going to be in to win that amazing grand prize. Uh, well, guys, I think that's just about everything I have to talk about for right now. Uh, so as always, you should um, you know, make sure to head over to Games Done Quick Dot com. Uh, check out the uh, the tracker. Um, you know it's going to have all the information you're looking for about uh, games upcoming. Oh, oops. I apologize, guys. I almost forgot. Um, I'd like to inform you that today's prize segment has been brought to you by 
open parentheses, sent furiously dabs, close parentheses. Nope. Nope. Not doing this one. Not doing it. I'm done. I'm out. Nope. Not doing this one, Hobbs. Not doing this one. I'm, I'm, I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. And he is out. <laughs> All right, I'm going to read a, a few donations here um, as we're almost getting uh, ready for this. Uh, we have a uh, $125 donation from Ace uh, Barreto that says, we've got all the orbs, but what about the pollo? <laughs> of course, it's, it's, not a, it's not a host without a pollo, isn't it? <laughs> I have a $128 and a three cent donation from Anonymous that says, amazing run, Tej. We were glued to our chairs. Thank you to everyone who makes GDQ happen. Jack Bob donates $100 and says, as always, thanks for your great work. Speed those runs. And $100 from uh, Laura Bucalypse. Oh, wow, I could not even, like, that was horrible. Um, that only put a heart. Oh, thank you. Heart to you, too. Crow donates $50 and says, saving frames, killing cancer, take my money. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it's begun. <laughs> it begins. Also, uh, just as a reminder, um, it looks like we did meet our uh, incentive for the Pac-Man Championship Edition 2. Um, so they will be fighting the true final boss, um, which uh, is only going to be fought in the 100%, but they're going to do it on the side after the run. So we met that. Um, we still got one that's almost finished, which is uh, Ratchet and Clank, um, the operatic aria in which uh, Zem, who is a trained opera singer, will sing an operatic aria called A Warm Night after his Ratchet and Clank up your arsenal run. So we're very, very close to finishing it. We're at 9,388. We need to reach 10,000. We are so close, so there. And we also have another uh, incentive that we want to uh, get met, which is the Diablo II cow level. Secret. There is no cow level. But if there were, we could clear it. And right now we need 40,000 to do so. We're right now we're at 19,966. So don't forget to send in those donations and if you want those incentives to get met. We have a $100 donation from Brandon C. It says, I wanted to donate per death in Celeste, but I don't think Teach died enough. So here's 100 bucks instead. <laughs> 